let's move to another uh, topic when you uh, select your students when uh, oh, uh, students you can uh, ask <laughs> approached you for an opportunity to uh, work on your um, research team. So what are the criteria that you are looking for when you select uh, graduate students? Okay, so um, as we share the same field, you know that the quality of students keep changing uh, into interesting uh, trend. Uh, so what I, when I start my career as a professor 10 years ago, I learned this is something also I learned from Dr. Nathan. Um, I learned that selecting a good students is part of the success. If you select students that's mm. not looking to learn, you will not be successful. He or she will not be successful. So what I do since I started, I do the interview for students in a way that they don't like it, but I remind them when they are successful later on about it. So I do the interview on three levels. The first interview is to get to know the students, make sure he or she is looking really to learn. And then I share with them one paper, random paper, not necessarily from my group, maybe from somebody else, to study it for one week. And you can ask anybody graduate from my team. I, I did it for everyone. And I don't have any tolerance until today. It take me maybe two months to get one student, but it's fine. I, that students will be successful. So after one week, we sit down and I discuss it with this candidate thoroughly. If I see that students understand it or this candidate, potential candidate, understand it, I move him or her to the next level. The last one is to discuss the project, make sure that they can do this kind of activity in the lab or the office, and that's it. And at that level, I accept the students. So this kind of three levels of uh, interviews, some people, they fail here, some people, they fail there, some people, they fail at the beginning, but at least to me, I'm telling myself I do my due diligence to make sure that I'm not going to get somebody to give me a hit. And I had this kind of issue at one or two students. One of them was accepted to the program by mistake. And I did not do the evaluation or this kind of three steps. And I was discussing with the department chair at that time, and he said, you know what? I just want to stay. No, if, if he got the chance to be a graduate student, let's give it to him. But it didn't work out. It did not work out. He was coming just to enjoy his life in North America. So you send him an email. No, I'm actually in New York. New York, you doing what? So we have a TA, we have RA. What is your, what are you doing? So um, that kind of process is a little bit challenge to some candidates. Some people, they accept it. And that's showing you that's, that you're going to have a good candidate. This is one thing. The second thing is I don't get PhD students that Oh, unfortunately, that's me. So it has to be through a master. Master it with has you. has to be through a master. With me or somebody that I knew. Okay. So uh, that means nobody in my group graduate with PhD without master's. You would say with me, 90%. 90. So I have seven, eight uh, PhDs. All of them, they have master's me except one. He try, He did a master's back in his university. He tried to actually come as a as a master's. They did not allow him to do it. But he accept to be a master's student with me. I give him the green light to be a PhD directly because of the fact that he accept a master's. But when he start working in the process, it did not work. So this is the criteria or the process of selecting a student. But what are the criteria and the skills that you are looking for in the student? One only criteria, being serious about learning. That's it. If you want to be a good uh, graduate student and learn this kind of knowledge, I will help you to do it. If you are coming to waste your time, just stay where you are. That's it. So my main criteria, which is only one criteria, is to make sure that they are seriously looking to learn, not to skip from countries, to move from one location to another, to come to Toronto to join somebody else. I don't accept and everyone in my team is the same. I, I, so one other thing that I do it generally, I'm treating everyone the same. 
It doesn't mean that Dr. Sayed actually called me and said, oh, that's a good student, take him. I will, but I will do my evaluation the same way. If he or she pass, I will take him. If not, unfortunately. And it happens with a couple of professors. They might be at the beginning don't like it, but they figure out that this is the case. That's, that's not somebody looking for PhD. So usually I, I am very, not strict, but that's my sister. And that's part of the success of the, uh, of the team when they graduate. So I don't have anybody in my group that they came and left. They have to graduate since they are coming to learn. I will help them to learn, they finish. During COVID for sure, some they extend the blah, 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 but it's okay. So when you admit uh, students or you accept the students who join your team, and and in most cases we receive that question, uh, Dr. Diasti, uh, we don't know which path should we take after we graduate academia or industry. So what would you ask them if they don't know their past? Okay, so um, I, I, this happened yesterday. Okay. And then yesterday, the day before. So we had a conference here, a meeting with the INSER uh, president and so on. So um, one of my students was uh, here and um, we had a discussion and he was asking me about teaching, blah, blah, blah. And I asked him, and that's what, to answer your question. So the way how I do it with my graduate students, I always have a discussion with them, friendly discussion about what's their object. But I don't ask them about their objective once they join, after I knew them for a few months. So let's say within the first year, I figure out what's their object. If their objective is in the industry, I got them to be involved in more activity that has industrial fit. They got to know them to see it. And from that, they can grab them easy. Uh, but if somebody in academia and help that individual to teach courses, to be more involved in TAs, to even get TA outside or teaching the, the course director outside and so on. And that's what I always do with the students, with the candidate. So in my group, I always ask them about what is your next object? Is it to work in industry or to continue in the academia or to continue being a professor? So continue in academia, then you want to continue doing PhD with me or somebody else? Somebody else? Absolutely, no problem. You get your accept, your reference letter and go to whoever that you want. And this, in fact, happens with three students. One of them is working with you. So he, he said, okay, I'm going to go to XYZ professor. Absolutely. During, once we finish master's, he got the accept. He declined it and continued. And same thing happens with um, another two uh, fellows that they work with uh, Mehran Al. So they went to U of T. Oh, okay. And they got the offer from there and they came back saying, no, I want to continue with you. I said, I told you, if you want to continue with me, I have the funding for you and I would love to continue with you if you want to leave. It's up to you. Because with the fact that masters and then PhD. Yeah, yeah. So they have that kind of opportunity and I have also the opportunity to say, no, masters is enough with me. You go somewhere else or you are done with it. So that's always what I do with them. So I always have a discussion to see what their objectives. And I found myself oh, uh, obligatory for that kind of questions, part of the training. So because what I do with my students, their time here at Masters and PhD is time for training. I got them trained to know that knowledge and also to be able to hit what they are looking for, industry, academia, whatever.